Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, the organizer, for inviting us to, to give this presentation. Today, we are going to be talking about uh, supporting and engaging community college STEM students in a virtual world. I am Joao Rodriguez from the National Science Department at Hosted Community College, and my colleague is... Uh, my name is Anna Ivanova. Uh, good afternoon, and I am an assistant professor at Natural Sciences Department. Thank you so much, Professor Ivanova. Well, as I mentioned today, uh, before, we are going to be talking about how to support and engage community college students in this STEM world. And this actually also virtual world that we are living so, you know, right now. Then um, we're going to be dividing this presentation in two main parts. The first part, we're going to, we're going to be talking about the learning strategy that we're using in our classes in physics and chemistry uh, classes. Mainly we're going to be talking about the physics and chemistry student challenges. And also we're going to be talking about the main three learning environment that we have been dealing with along this uh, virtual learning, game-based learning, Alex. And um, you know, Professor Ivano is going to explain a little bit more about this um, platform. And also we are going to touch a little bit about the virtual labs. Then also at the end, we're going to, to talk in this first part about the um, activity, the STEM activity that also we perform in our institution and also related to research component, undergraduate research. Then in the second part, we're going to allow, you know, to create the, um, you know, session for discussion and idea. And also we're going to bring some kind of, you know, active learning that we want to share with you as well. Well, we come in from, from Hostos. Hostos, I'm pretty sure most of you know, is in the, in the South Bronx and is located in the South Bronx of New York City. And our profile as student population as fall 2018, the total enrollment is about 7,000 uh, students. Uh, out of these 7,000 students, 66 represent female. And mainly, you know, uh, the demographic, as you can see from the statistic, is Hispanic, about 60%, Black, 36%, then White, two, um, Asian, 3.5%. Like you can see that Hosto is mainly Hispanic and, and Black. Now, what are the main, the main challenges that our students face, you know, when they actually want to take physics and chemistry courses. Well, you know, unfortunately, our students, when they come to, to college, they actually, they don't have a great preparation in science courses. And this is actually most of the time because they haven't been exposed to these physics or chemistry classes in high school. And then when they actually get into college, they actually lack this, you know, general pre uh, preparedness for facing the challenge of these courses that they need in order to, you know, get um, into a STEM discipline like engineering or science or biology. Then another problem that we found, you know, among our student challenges is the lack of math preparedness. You know, uh, and this is actually something that we discuss every single day, IT physics. And then, you know, when they are in physics one, they need to have at least co uh, the core requisite, they need to have at least calculus too. And the main problem that we find is that it's not like they don't know the math, but they have problem in order to translate this math in order to solve physics problem. Then one thing is actually to know the math, and the other thing actually is to use this math in another setting that is not specifically the, you know, the math, this after analysis skill that the student need to, you know, to develop. Another problem that we found, the student actually have those kind of challenges is actually lack of critical thinking and also problem solving skills. We need to really work really hard in order to enhance those skills in our students. And well, the last three one that we mainly found is also organic, organizational skill, time management. You know, if the students don't get ready for the challenge of the course, if they actually know they are not really organized, it's really, really difficult for them to, to follow and then to complete that course. And then the last two is lack of confidence and that they belong to this STEM field, that they believe that they can do it. You know, they have a lot of potential, but we need to actually help them to discover that, that potential. And these actually are the main challenges that our students, that we actually found that our students have when they enter into our physics and chemistry you know, courses. Well, um, you know, these challenges, they are present, uh, they were present when we were working in person with students. And now with the uh, with this transition to the um, 
online learning um, and online modes, um, these challenges, they didn't go away. They're still there and we still have to face them and we still have to address them. So with this transition to the uh, online um, learning, we uh, had to modify some of our settings for, for uh, our major components of our courses like lecture and recitation and lab. We had to still keep some of these components that we had before and we had to modify uh, the other ones. So in our lecture um, environments, so we, try to keep very interactive atmosphere. Of course, it's very challenging when you are sitting uh, on, one, on one side of the screen and you see uh, just you know, some gray circles on the other side of the screen and you don't see the students right? Uh, most of the time. But we try to keep that still very uh, engaging because uh, we constantly ask questions. We um, do the poll questions right? Um, throughout the class. Uh, we show videos, we uh, show some simulations um, and we try to keep even in this condition, in this situation that we're living in, we, start, we try to still keep our uh, humor on and uh, it helps, uh, I think, with the, with the students. Um, so our lecturers are still very engaging. We try to keep them that way. During the recitation time, this is a time when we solve the problems usually. And in in-person in class, this is a time when it's very, very active and uh, interactive uh, uh, kind of portion of our course where we, um, we walk in the class, the students uh, come to the blackboards and solve the problems. So it's a, it's a very different, it was kind of difficult to uh, imagine all that in the online mode, but uh, we still um, try to keep it very interactive. We use uh, whiteboards um, to solve the problems together with the students. Uh, and uh, we have to say that we are using in our classes, Blackboard uh, Collaborate Ultra um, as a platform. And um, in some classes it's Zoom, but um, mostly we use the Blackboard Collaborate Ultra and we use all the features that uh, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra provides us with. Um, so such as, you know, like Whiteboard is very actively um, used in our, uh, in our classes. Um, so the students, we call the students to the, instead of coming to the board in person they come now to the whiteboard so and uh, they actually also like to uh, use the whiteboard to write and to, to solve the problem and we call them of course we ask them questions again in during the recitation as well uh, so it's very interactive um, the lab component this was the probably most challenging parts um, in general to for science courses to move when we moved to the uh, online mode because um, a lab is a hands-on um, uh, activity. It's a, a practical activity. And um, when we uh, transitioned to the uh, online mode, we had to come up with um, some ways to still um, let our students um, feel that, uh, feel that they are working uh, uh, with, the, with the kind of lab components uh, on a high level. So uh, what we decided to do is we, um, we use for, for um, chemistry courses, we use uh, Connect Virtual Labs, it's from McGraw-Hill, um, and we use FAT for um, uh, uh, simulations for the physics classes. Um, we use different videos and discussions. So typically we have this, um, for example, the class and we have the uh, videos um, regarding the uh, corresponding topic that we are discussing in the class and we um, walk through kind of these videos we pause we discuss we ask questions um, and then uh, we have also basically some questions regarding what possible uh, um, problems this uh, the uh, student may have in the um, setting uh, while doing the lab. What are the mistakes that can be made? So we're trying to kind of um, bring it as close as possible to the real um, uh, experience they would have in person. And virtual labs are very helpful in that way. And we actually uh, um, really are um, thinking of um, incorporating them as well later when we get to the uh, in-person um, setting. So um, then we have a great help from supplemental instructors and peer leaders. We, these are our uh, former students uh, that took the class before and um, they uh, excelled in that class and now they're helping their peers. Um, 
and uh, even in now online mode, they uh, are present in our classes. They uh, they have their separate sessions as well. So uh, there is a constant interaction between the uh, students uh, and the, their uh, supplementary instructors and peer leaders and us uh, faculty. Uh, and this is um, another uh, thing that we have is Alex. It's um, it's something that we had before as well, especially in chemistry course. Um, and uh, we uh, now with the online modes, we kind of expanded the um, its use um, in our classes. It's uh, an online platform that is uh, from uh, McGraw Hill, and um, it stands for um, Assessment and Learning in Knowledge Spaces. So it's not the name of the person. <laughs> so uh, we also, we, I will talk about this a little bit more um, uh, afterwards, and I will talk about the game-based learning and uh, virtual labs and FATS. We will discuss it later on, uh, as long as with, with, the, um, with the Alex as, as well. The other uh, uh, thing that we want to discuss here is office hours. And um, although in uh, in-person um, time, we have office hours very actively um, uh, engaging students uh, during these office hours, students come usually to our offices, ask questions, and we solve the problems and uh, discuss all their difficulties that they have uh, regarding the material. But um, in online mode, uh, we found that office hours are even more valuable now. So uh, we, uh, expand our office hours mostly and we um, we make uh, you know our time available for our students when they need us and uh, this has been very uh, helpful uh, according to our students um, we do video recordings um, for the lecture recitation labs and extra help with problems so usually our classes now we um, we um, record all our classes for uh, lecture recitation and for the lab. And what we also do is, especially uh, when I work with Alex, we uh, I do some extra her, extra kind of help uh, recordings for the problems that are uh, there in, in Alex according to all the chapters and topics that we cover there. So they are very helpful. It's like an extra um, resource for the students. And um, another a very important component is extracurricular STEM activities. Um, we Our department is very active usually in providing all these different activities through clubs, through different programs. And um, uh, we, by moving to the uh, kind of online setting, we not only we preserved uh, that uh, active um, uh, kind of uh, uh, action uh, re regarding these activities, um, providing these activities to our students, but we also uh, expanded it. We found some new ways to uh, engage our students. And um, these are basically different uh, online STEM events, online presentations, um, and undergraduate research. We will talk about this later as well. So uh, the learning environment uh, right now in the in the online setting, uh, we kind of would like now to focus about on on few things that I mentioned before. Um, it's Alex uh, virtual labs and game based learning. This is game based learning is uh, something that we used it before, of course, but uh, we enhanced it in online uh, mode, and we will talk about this um, uh, in in a few moments. So uh, we have. Um, two types of uh, games that we kind of uh, use in our classes. It's Jeopardy style and, um, and uh, the Kahoot style games um, and uh, the virtual labs, uh, as well as mentioned, Connect virtual labs and um, uh, FAT uh, Colorado uh, simulations. So why uh, Alex? I, um, Alex is, uh, you know, we started in 2018, in fall 2018, um, I piloted uh, the um, uh, Alex in, in general chemistry courses that I was teaching. And since then we've been uh, using Alex uh, in all down general chemistry courses um, at our departments and uh, as well as we started using it in physics class as well to some level extent and we use them also in our boot camps for um, chemistry and for physics so why alex what is so special about it and as i mentioned before this is an online platform um, that is uh, from McGraw Hill. And uh, the features that are very attractive uh, to us as uh, to an, as an educators is the fact that it's, uh, it, it 
um, has an adaptive approach and uh, equ equitable approach. So, and uh, also with all the challenges that we mentioned before, general preparedness for the science courses, math preparedness, critical thinking and problem solving skills, organizational skills and confidence and belief in their potential, uh, Alex um, has been helping the students with all of those uh, challenges. Um, and we hear them when they talk to us about it, we see the progress in their work. So uh, this is kind of based on these observations that we have been um, having throughout uh, these uh, years and semesters that we are teaching with Alex. So we will talk about now more in details about Alex um, and show you what's what is that's very special about it. So I personally feel that uh, it's like my um, TA, it's like my teaching assistant, because uh, it's there uh, for me and it's there for my students. And um, Alex uh, provides basically the support both for the faculty and for the students. And uh, as for the instructors, um, it, it has a very clear and organized and informative platform. Um, and uh, it has a very detailed assessment, um, especially you see the reports here. We have just like a typical kind of um, page uh, that you see in Alex from the uh, instructor perspective. Um, there are so many types of reports. You can see uh, the Alex Pi, you can see the assignments, the progress, the custom reports, you can actually uh, order and then they, they you can get the custom reports. Um, time and topic, so knowledge per slice. So this is basically, you can see these reports not only for uh, the whole class, but also for every single student individually. And uh, this is an extremely, extremely important uh, for us to see because we want to see where our students are at every single moment. And uh, this helps a lot. And uh, for the students, uh, the very important uh, um, component here is the prerequisite knowledge check. It's, which is actually important not only for students, but for us as well. So uh, the, every student, when they get to the course, they um, have to take this initial prerequisite knowledge check. And this initial knowledge check identifies um, what they know, what they don't know, because many students, they don't even know what they know and what they don't know. So uh, for them, it is also a kind of revelation. They know, they understand that there are some things that they don't know in order to be prepared for this course. And for us as professors, we can see um, what those gaps are in general for each student or for the um, class in, in, in total, the whole class. So, uh, and then after they take this initial knowledge check, the Alex identifies their preparedness and then each of them, each of the student is taken by basically uh, on the on their learning path, but it's individualized learning path towards the goals that are set uh, for the for this course. And um, if there is, a, for example, a student that has a problem, let's say with conversions, um, and another student is great at math, so they will have slightly different paths. Uh, in order to get through all the objectives that um, uh, we, we set for them in this course. And then in the end, uh, they all have this chance to progress and to learn and not only to learn, but also to retain materials because there are systematic knowledge checks as well, uh, which help the students understand that they are learning something, but then they also need to retain that material. And there is also a pie mode uh, that helps them uh, go through this uh, material. Um, and catch up on the chat on some other topics. So regarding the chemistry uh, uh, labs, we have the, um, we use the connect um, virtual labs from McGraw Hill. And uh, this type, these labs is like a package. It has uh, not only the, just the simulation where the students can actually operate and use their kind of practical skills uh, online, of course, but the, it has also the uh, very important component that is um, the questions and background information, questions like pre-lab questions, post-lab questions. And this is just an example uh, for you. So the students get a chance to um, 
work on these prop on these um, um, uh, labs, uh, and they have a chance. Basically, in when we have in person lab, they work in teams, but uh, here they have a chance to work individually on that, which is great because they all have this. Basically, they have to pass these uh, labs, uh, uh, the questions, the simulations, and they gather this uh, information and um, uh, practical side as well. So this is the part when the this is a kind of typical part of the simulation. So basically, they have to go first through the, through the questions, some background information, and then they get to do the uh, to do the simulation. Well, in physics, uh, we were very lucky when everything started. When we actually had to to switch to the online platform, we found out that something actually we have some knowledge before about this great simulation at Colorado University, that is what Professor Ivanovich mentioned before the FET. And then the good thing here is this is not only for physics, but also you can find for biology, for for chemistry, but specifically for physics, all the lab that we have in person, we were able to adapt it into uh, the online environment. And that has been very effective. And, and the effective may actually come because the student, when they are in the lab, they actually, sometimes they, work, they need to work in teams because well, you know, two or three members in the team, or even actually sometimes four, depending on the availability of the resources that we have. And then even actually when they're working in Cabo or in three, you know, sometimes actually they look at each other, or they look at you, one is only working and the other one are not working. And then we actually need to actually say, well, you know, everybody has to worry. But now with this simulation, everyone has to do the simulation. And this actually is very good because they really actually can, can learn from their own hands-on, you know, in quotation, hands-on experience. And this actually has been very, very, very good for reinforcing, you know, the, the, the topics and the knowledge that they were gaining in the, in the lecture part. Well, as we did actually with this simple um, simulation, we did it with all the lab and also for the final project that they need to present in the, in the physics class that I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, in the, in the next slides. Also, let me make in class, we also use this within the, this learning environment, we use game based learning. And then I'm pretty sure that you're familiar with this fame of one, you know, once you even play the music, it's um, Jeopardy. And then we use actually this for our recitation uh, time. And then what we do is that we actually separate the team, you know, the group in different teams, and then they compete with each other. Also, with the support of the, of the science and, and other class, other classes that we have in our institution, at the end we actually give prizes to, to the to the student. And I'm going to give you an example of how actually uh, joyful and you know how much entertained the student actually have with this. I'm going to actually test. We are going to test your knowledge about physics a little bit. And here is the question. I don't know, Professor Ivanova, we can actually do the poll or we can do directly in the chat. We will do it in the chat because there is okay. no poll uh, here uh, option for us. So I beautiful. All right, and the question is, I'm going to give you, we're going to give you 30 seconds, right? This is actually what we do with the students. Well, if you see the student actually can choose, you know, a cell or, you know, a colon, you know, depending on the topic that we are, you know, we are working on. And then they have 30 seconds to answer the question. We're going to give you 30 seconds to answer this really nice question that you, of course, might know. And the question is stay. Here it is. Okay. Suppose, you are talking by interplanetary telephone to a friend who lives on the moon. She tells you that she has just won a Newton of gold in a contest. Excitedly, you tell her that you entered the Earth version of the same contest and also won a Newton of gold. Who is richer? You are, your friend is, you're equally rich. Now your time, 30 seconds. And we use actually this. You can answer the chat. You can answer the chat, yeah. And this actually is really good for reinforcing conceptual, you know, concept, conceptual, you know, um, format that they need to really actually uh, learn along the semester. All well, these conceptual questions. Okay, Professor, you know, you see in the chat, who is the winner? We we have now uh, some answers. Please Beautiful. keep keep answering. Um... All right. We are wrapping up now. Okay, let's give one more seconds. Okay, we can go. 
<laughs> Wrapping up. Thank you for all your answers. Thank you very much for your participation. This is actually what we ask the student, you know, to get really get engaged. And this is the way actually at the same time learning, but also, you know, get, getting some joy in this process. Well, and the correct answer is ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. you are, your friend is, or you are equally rich. And here is the answer. Okay, slow motion. The correct <laughs> answer is B, and why is B? We, only, we don't only give actually the answer, but also we give the explanation. Well, because the value of G, you know, the acceleration due to gravitation of four is smaller on the moon than on the earth, more of gold would be required to represent one Newton away on the moon. Therefore, your friend on the moon is richer by about a factor of six. Remember guys, we actually in our daily conversation, we use actually weight, but really actually we're referring to mass. And then there is a big difference between weight and mass. Okay, beautiful. Congratulations. Many people answer correct, right? Many no. of the, our audience. We have actually no correct answers in there. Oh one. my goodness, then we learn from the experience. Beautiful. We learn from the experience. Okay. Yes. Good. Thank you so much for all your answers. That was that was great. Okay. All right. Then another another uh, platform that we use uh, in, in our game best learning is Kahoot that actually have been becoming very famous lately. And this is actually Kahoot we have been using for the whole second Olympiad, for all the contests that we actually have in our classes, and it has been really amazing. And by the way, in the last part of the presentation, we have very actually, you know, a very small Kahoot that we prepare for you about science, about history of science. Okay. All right, and then also, as Professor Vanova was mentioning, together with all this, you know, um, learning environment that we provide in our institution, in our classes, we also emphasize a lot in undergraduate research. Well, then we have three main programs in our institution that a student can get involved, LSM, CDIS, and CSTEP. Right now, actually, we was just coming from a seminar that was very beautiful about, you know, uh, that is organized by the LSM, that is actually intro to STEM research seminar, and that we actually, you know, um, provide along the whole spring semester. And the students are really, really, really engaged. Right now, we actually have more than 40 students doing research you know, in our institution. Also, we have a lot of along the semester. And this actually has been the beauty of the online. You know, not everything online has been actually really bad because we have been learning from the, from the, from the opportunity, from this opportunity. And then now we actually have more opportunity to bring and to, to, you know, to provide more seminars. And this case actually STEM related seminars. And as I mentioned to you before, also the host of STEM Olympiad that before, before actually was in person and now actually we jump into this online platform using Kahoot and has been very, very, very successful as well. And we have these different clubs that we mentioned before, science, physics, robotics, geoscience clubs. And we uh, sometimes we collaborate uh, between these clubs. Sometimes we have separately uh, presenting different activities and we have different presentations or just like activities like, you know, this Kahoot game on, on some knowledge, uh, science knowledge. And we have to say that there are there is a great uh, attendance of the students because now I think probably in online mode, they are able to go to different activities uh, faster than it was uh, before in person. We also have our department is um, uh, known for uh, you know, holding these two great events. It's um, uh, in spring semester we have Earth Week and in fall semester we have Science Week. And through these um, uh, huge events, our students have an uh, ability and have the possibility to um, present sometimes, to uh, participate or to just attend different um, presentations and activities that we provide uh, uh, through this um, uh, kind of different events. And uh, we also have um, a very important uh, component um, at our um, uh, department that we call there's called STEM, uh, BMI STEM uh, winter and summer boot camps. Um, these is basically the uh, uh, the boot camps are three week each, um, and uh, we will have now our uh, summer uh, boot camp from June seven to June twenty seven. So this is free for students, and uh, these boot camps they provide um, the uh, students with uh, some kind of preparatory classes for the um, upcoming classes in general chemistry, general uh, physics, uh, and also math and some engineering uh, um, engineering classes. So they are very helpful for our students and um, they, they basically, uh, we have attendance, uh, well attended uh, boot camps in, in 
both semesters. As I mentioned before, also in physics, I also think, you know, Professor Urano also does something similar in chemistry. We have the physics project. This actually is the final project that they need to present. And before the pandemic, we actually had this, this physics project in place. And it was actually very successful. The students really enjoy a lot. But now we transform all this project into online. And the students actually, we were able to adapt all this project into the online platform and also have been very, very successful. Here is what happened before the pandemic, but we actually have been trying to keep exactly the same, the same um, you know, format in the, in, the online, in the online platform. And here actually is you know, some students who went after they presented their, you know, their research, their final project in, you know, in Visis one classes. Then before we finish today, I would like, you know, we would like actually to share with you and to play a little bit about this Kahoot. And I hope actually you enjoy this actually what we do in class. I'm pretty sure that most of you might be familiar with Kahoot. And let's see actually how much we have learned, you know, in terms of history of science, history of science. And here is, you know, um, remember for Kahoot, I need to, Okay, for Kahoot, you need actually to give, you, you're going to be giving a pin and then you need to provide that pin and then you're going to be accessing to the, to the game. All right, here it is. So you need to go to uh, www.kahoot.it and then put this pin, it will take just few minutes uh, for us to, to go through this game, but I think um, you will enjoy that. And this is actually what we do in our, in our classes right now, right? Yes. Okay, Chris, the first one. Beautiful, thank you, Chris. LB. Okay, we can do better than that, right? Let's go. It should be fun. Please, please enter your name there. All right. Remember, you need to go to kahoot.it, www.kahoot.it, and then introduce your PIN number. Okay, one more, great, thank you. Now we are getting used to this, beautiful. And we are wrapping up with this, okay? Okay, we can do better than that, beautiful. Good, thank you. Okay, a few more seconds. Anyway, you can actually join as we start, okay? Couple of more. Okay. I think we can start and then, you know, somebody actually can join later on. Okay, here is actually an example of what we do in class. Let's start. Ready? Let's go. General Assign Knowledge example of what we do in class. Three, two, one. First question. Name the scientist who stated the three law of motion. Three, two, one. Time's up. Well, congratulations. Beautiful, beautiful. Nice. <laughs> we got this one. We got this one. Let's see actually how the standing look like. Oh, LK in the first answered place. in the chat as well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> LK in the first place, Chris in the second place, Jeff in the third place, EZ is coming up in the fourth place, and LB coming to the fifth place. Okay, let's go. Next question. This woman scientist made a crucial contribution to the discovery of the double helix, helix structure of DNA. Three, two, one. 
Beautiful. Okay. Okay. Wait, the majority that should answer correct this question. Beautiful. Let's see how the standing look like. Or Jeff actually coming to the first place, EC to the second place, LK to the third place, Chris now go to the fourth place and LB actually coming up. Beautiful, beautiful. Joel, if I may interrupt, I think we won't have time to complete all the questions, unfortunately, because there is at 155, I think there is a keynote speaker. Right. So yeah, we don't yes, want we to have take to end it now. Time. Yes, but we wanted just to show you what we're doing in our class. And I hope that at least with these two questions, maybe um, you, you kind of, uh, understood what we are doing and how we are engaging our class, um, uh, our uh, students in our classes. Beautiful. All right. Here is actually then to wrap up our presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you uh, for uh, for this uh, playing the game with us and um, for listening to our presentation.